This is Money Exchange with Andrew Barnett. Hello and welcome to Money Exchange, the program that keeps you up to date with what's driving the big currency trends as well as the latest news and views from leading experts on where currencies may be headed next. Over the past number of years, there has been an explosion in the number of Chinese investors opening trading accounts inside China, and at one stage in 2015, one million trading accounts per month were being opened. There is no other country in the world that has a population with such an insatiable appetite to trade the global currency markets. And it's not just the Chinese inside China that love trading FX. Local Australian Chinese investors are also opening trading accounts in droves. And our first guest tonight hosts his own currency segment on local Chinese radio here in Australia. I'm keen to ask him why the Chinese love FX and what's their strategy. We'll also speak to money exchange resident professional trader Alex Coslin on which currencies were the biggest winners and losers losers of the week. Have there been any major trend changes and what to look out for next as we head towards the next RBA interest rate decision? Plus, on tonight's show, we'll give you access to a fantastic 10-point currency checklist. But before we discuss any of that, let's take a look at this week's currency headlines. The Canadian dollar got a boost this week after OPEC agreed to cut oil output for the first time since the US recession. With oil on the rise, this will likely lift inflation expectations at the Bank of Canada and underpin the Canadian dollar heading into the last quarter of 2016. The currency market gave Hillary Clinton the win after the first of three presidential debates this week. Traders believe a Clinton win in November will be good for the US dollar as it comes with a degree of uh, political stability. On the other hand, traders agree a Trump victory would come with political risk and may see the US dollar fall. The next presidential debate is scheduled for October 9. The Bank of Japan said this week it was ready to use whatever tools were available to reach the central bank's desired inflation target of 2%, but but also admitted it has lost the ability to weaken the yen. Even with negative interest rates and having printed over 400 trillion yen in the last few years, the yen has risen by as much as 17% against the US dollar this year. Well, we know the Chinese love the casinos, but it appears they also enjoy trading currencies. Joining me here in the studio to tell us more about why Chinese have taken a liking to the FX market is Mike Huang, Senior Currency Analyst at Go Markets. Mike, welcome to Money Exchange. Thanks, Andrew. Mike, the growing popularity of the, the FX market for the Chinese, it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Tell us a little bit about why it is that the local Chinese market here in Australia is so attracted to the, to the FX market. Yeah, sure. Um, I've been servicing the Chinese um, clients for in the past 10 years and I also experienced the booming period, not only the mining industry, but also my client base. That's quite fortunate. Um, in my view, there are several factors that contribute to the growth of the popularity yep. of the FX trades. Um, obviously, the economy in China the monetary policy, and also the investment options in China. So as we see, that China has become the world's second largest economy in the world. Um, well, by 2016, there were more than 4 million people in China got total assets more than 1 million US dollars. Wow. Yeah, that's quite amazing. And this number is increasing by 20% every year. So we're talking about close to 800,000 new millionaires every year. So how many local Chinese investors would you anticipate that are trading the market right now living in Australia? We're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, and do you see it as a, a, as a, a growing market at 20% like it is in China? Yeah, definitely, because um, not only the wealth grows, but also we have new migrants from Asia and other, all, all around the world. So for my, from my experience, the, the growth in the local Chinese community is even faster than the growth rate in China. Is there any particular reason why they enjoy trading the currency markets, say, over, over stocks? Is it the leverage? Is it the, is the profit opportunity in the short term rather than sort of stocks over a longer period of time? 
Yeah, actually, um, for China, for most of the Chinese uh, people, the um, the most the two common ways for investing money will be the stock market and the real estate market. But unfortunately, the stock market in China just plunged more than 40 percent from the high of 5,200 last year. And it's still struggled to maintain the 3,000 level. So they're looking for something that can potentially give them a return on investment exactly. a lot quicker. Yeah, so we got the money, we got the people. They're desperate looking for alternative options for the money to go. That's why the FX trades become one of the potential products they're looking at. And I read an article a little while ago that the Chinese like the Australian brokers because the security of ASIC and also the stability here in our economy. Is that is that true? Yeah, of course. Uh, not only the security and also the stability, and also with the, uh, the lower entry cost, the high, uh, high liquidity, and also the other sort of futures that bring them to the, 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 the FX trades. But if, and also another reason for the Chinese community is because physical demand for the Chinese, the, the, the Aussie dollar, the exchange rate, has been involved to most almost every Chinese people in Australia, yeah. like um, uh, overseas travels, import, export, um, international business, and so, so all sorts of things. Yeah. So um, they have physical demand for the exchange um, from between the Australian dollar to RMB and Australian dollar to US dollar. And tell us a little bit about recently you you embarked with it with Go Markets and you look after the the Go Markets uh, Chinese clients there. You embarked on a trading competition. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, sure. Um, about four weeks ago, we had a, a trading competition uh, with the local uh, university students. And um, for those students who uh, went in for the competition, they had a really good experience for the real market. So they. Um, by opening a demo account with them, funded for the fifty thousand virtual money. And who who won, who made the most money? Well, actually, the the very interesting we have very interesting interesting figure. Um, according to our database, um, most of those students are fresh new learners for wow. the market. Yeah, but. 40% of them actually made the money on during the first seven days. So it was the fresh newbies that actually made money opposed to the perhaps more experienced traders that have been trading for a while. That's the first story, but unfortunately the, the number decreased to only 17% after two weeks. I think that's when the, the greedy emotion kicked in. And, and tell us, are you able to give us the figure, Mike, that the $50,000 turned into? Who won the competition and how much did they make in the, in the period? The final winner actually made a 140% return, return on investment. Yeah, without losing any single trade for more than 10%. Is I that think, right? Yeah, that's very outstanding, I think. F fantastic. Well, uh, give us your thoughts on the Aussie dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you do a report on the local Chinese radio uh, yeah. e every day. What are your thoughts on the Aussie dollar between now and Christmas? Yeah. Well, since most of my uh, clients are retail clients, so every time when I speak to them, I have to use a very simple sentence to explain the trend. Yeah. So, um, in my opinion, the Aussie dollar, we, when we um, looking at the Aussie dollar, we have to look at three things. Um, obviously, the commodity price, um, the U.S. Fed Federal Reserve um, the meeting, mm -hmm. and also the RBA statement. So, we, we, when we look at the commodity price, precisely, more precisely, the iron ore price, um, the price actually bounced back from twenty-seven dollars in last December to uh, fifty dollars at late late April this year. So that was about seventy percent increase, and this brought all the to 78.35, the high of the year. And since then, this, the, the commodity price has stabilized at 40 to 50 range. So what are you advising clients at the moment, Mike? Are you suggesting to them that perhaps being long on the Aussie dollar may be a better option than being short between now and Christmas? Well, in my opinion, um, from now to Christmas period, um, most likely the Aussie dollar will stay stronger above the 75 range so because of the three reasons, as I said, so we won't, probably we won't able to see any rate hike from the Federal Reserve, and also the RBA has changed the the inflation target from a fixed number to a more flexible range. Mm. So, which means there might be some indications that the new governor will be more tolerant to the bad result from the inflation. And what were your thoughts uh, late this week, Mike, with uh, oil prices spiking higher? Naturally, that's probably going to be good news for the Canadian dollar between now and the rest of the year also. Of course, yeah. 
Um, but for my opinion, the, um, the oil price will, will not break any higher to, to the 60 levels because um, with a, with a higher, higher level of the price for the, for the oil price, the, um, basically we have to think about the, the, the oil from the United States. So which means there will, there will be a battle between the OPEC and the US. So, Okay, so Aussie dollar potentially higher between now and the end of the year. Mm -hmm. The yen mm. has been in the news recently with the Bank of Japan effectively saying that it's lost control of its currency. Yep. Do you see the yen appreciating in value between now and the rest of the year as it has done most of this year? Well, from the technical point of, of view, um, basically um, the yen has triple bottom at 100 level to the United, uh, US dollar. So if the yen breaks through the 100 psychological level, then we potentially will see an even further drop. To the downside. Yeah, exactly. But on the other hand, we, we, put, we anticipate that the, the, the Bank of Japan might announce any breaking out news at any time. Mm -hmm. So we might face a big news any time for the yen. So. All right, Mike. Well, I appreciate your time tonight. And if you're interested in uh, getting involved in some trading competitions, you can jump on the Go Markets website or, uh, or give them a call and ask to speak to Mike. Mike, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Andrew. Don't go away, because after the break, we'll chat with professional trader Alex Coslin on what currency traders should be looking out for next. A rental property can be a rewarding investment, but even with great tenants, there'll always be life's unavoidable accidents and uncertainties. Standard building insurance may not cover damage caused by tenants or loss of rent, leaving you out of pocket. Terry Shear is Australia's leading landlord insurance specialist with award-winning landlord insurance from $1 a day to protect your property and rental income. Call Terry Shear today or go online. Get your business online with a domain, website and round-the-clock support from GoDaddy. Think you can turn your idea into a success? We know you can. Go you. GoDaddy. Nighttime is my time with Olay Regenerist Overnight Miracle. From first drop, it helps renew your skin. And used with Olay's most advanced cream, it boosts skin renewal in just five nights. For firmer skin with visibly reduced wrinkles, search Olay Overnight Miracle. The Audi A3 Runout is now on. Purchase the Audi A3 sedan with style and tactic packages from only $45,000 drive away. The Audi A3 Runout. Timing is everything. Well, congratulations. Yes. You guys didn't muck around. Huh? Thanks, guys. It only took three weeks. Yeah. What? Mm. We've had ours on the market for two months. Three. Are you guys on realestate.com.au? With twice the visits of any property site Australia-wide, if you're not on realestate.com.au, you're not in the market. We're getting a Shih Tzu. Knowledge Applied is power. Incredible things are created with the right knowledge. Knowledge also breeds foresight, giving strength to manage risk and make better decisions. When you choose to trade Forex with Go Markets, you'll gain access to our foresight and expert market analysis. Analysis that could help you identify potential financial risks and wait for the right opportunities. Go Markets, your first choice for Forex. When it comes to achieving your goals and protecting what matters, it's the days that really count. Talk to us about advice, super or insurance. Can your bank help you make today count? Combank can. Hi, I'm Alan Border. Getting older can make it harder to do everyday things. My legs and feet started to give me trouble. I discovered it could be poorer circulation so I now use Revitive Circulation Booster. Revitive uses clinically proven electrical muscle stimulation to actively improve leg circulation, which could reduce swollen feet and ankles. For me, just one relaxing session a day makes all the difference. I believe using Revitive has really helped me. Try Revitive today with our 60-day money-back trial.
Welcome back to Money Exchange. So, who were the big winners and who were the big losers of the week? And what should currency traders be looking out for next week? Joining us is our resident Money Exchange professional trader, Alex Coslin. Alex, welcome back to Money Exchange. Thank you for having me back, Andrew. How's the trading been uh, going since you were last on the show? Uh, I would say consistent. Consistent? Uh, consistent. <laughs> Good. That's the main thing. Well. The markets have been busy again this week. In the last few weeks, we've seen uh, the US dollar all over the news, and we're probably going to get sick of talking about the uh, presidential election between now and Christmas, because effectively the Bank of Japan and the US Fed have probably fired all their bullets between uh, now and maybe December. Um, the biggest winner of the week, we probably have to say the Canadian dollar, even though we haven't seen it rise as much as what Others may have forecast with oil rising so high, but uh, oil certainly put a firecracker under the Canadian dollar late this week. Absolutely. I think once the OPEC came out and uh, made a decision to try and freeze um, their output production, as we know, the, the, the caddies is tied quite heavily to the, to the oil. And I think, we, I think we've got a chart here that uh, we're going to have a look at in a moment. And uh, the last four out of the last five days have been up days. So give us your thoughts with respect to any technical patterns or anything that you may be seeing on the, the Canadian dollar between now and perhaps in the next couple of weeks. In reality, technically, if you, all the charts, both on a daily um, four-hour and one-hour chart, are actually all showing the, the same trend direction with the caddy expecting to, to increase. Um, the, da the daily chart is um, sorry is showing that the US against the caddy is in its way five down. Yep. Uh, the four-hour chart has actually shown a five-wave cycle to the upside with divergence, so we expect technically now for it to start trending lower. And uh, on the one-hour chart, it's actually in a way five down. So technically, uh, it's certainly looking that... Um, Caddy against week the at US the moment. is going and to that go. would go along with uh, Tony's views, who was on the show last week from CBA about the US dollar potentially moving lower on the uh, against the Canadian dollar between now and Christmas. Let's move, move now along to the yen because it was probably the biggest loser of the week, even though it's yes. been rising and has risen something like 17% against the US dollar um, in the last uh, 12 months. What are your thoughts on the yen? I think the end's in an interesting range, as your previous guest mentioned, Mike, that uh, you know we've hit that 100 or even 99 four times in the last four months, so it, it is a psychological barrier. But on the upside, it's sort of bouncing around that you know to the 104 level, and that's really sort of the next upper level, the 104, which is what we hit in um, in September this year. And if we manage to move beyond that, then uh, the 107 level is actually. Um, the next high, but also mm -hmm. corresponds uh, with the 200 moving average on a daily chart. So it could go either way, as you know, depending on what the, the Bank of Japan does or doesn't do from here on. But uh, I think the key levels, if it breaks to 107, it could yep. move up, or if it breaks below the 100, could be heading lower. It could be heading lower. So yeah, that 100 level is going to be the, the key psychological yeah. level, isn't it, between now and Christmas? Because as you said, it's been there three or four times now. So, so the charts are suggesting at the moment possibly to the upside. Yeah, I think it's range bound, but I think I'm more inclined to see if it, if it breaks to the upside uh, above the 107 then. Okay, so US dollar caddy lower, US dollar yen potentially higher. What, um, what do we need to keep an eye on next week, Alex? We've got a big week of economic data uh, in the southern yeah. hemisphere here. Tell us about what's coming on Tuesday. So Tuesday is the RBA. They announce uh, the, the next move. Um, general consensus is that uh, rates are going to stay at hold at 1.5. With the new governor in place, it'd be a brave man to uh, to pull a trigger on, on, his, on his first meeting. So, I think they'll stay on hold, um, which is what I expected. But also, with the elections and the Fed Reserve making their decision in December, I think it's too early for the ABA to make any sort of. Um, so, okay, I'm move. sitting in front of my computer at home. I'm looking to trade the Aussie bit, Aussie dollar between now and Tuesday. Do I wait, or do I pull the trigger before then? What are your thoughts? What do you look at? If, if you're seeing something technically on the charts, it's lining up, are you going to wait until Tuesday after or are you going to take the trade beforehand? If there's a technical setup a couple of days before the ABA, I set out. I, I, You'll leave it. I'll leave, leave it alone. It. Because for me, then it becomes a 50 50 toss of the coin. And you, know, you, you trade setups, you're looking for a, uh, an edge. So coming into these big announcements, the smart thing to do is stay out. Patience. Yes. Patience. All right, what else have we got coming uh, next week? Friday, the big numbers, the um, non-fund payrolls out of the US. Um, as, as we all know, that um, part of the Fed criteria is 
the unemployment numbers, and so that's a big number. Uh, in September, it was unexpectedly low, around the 150, where the previous two months were in that high 200s. Mm -hmm. So I think that's going to be the market's going to be looking to see what sort of payroll numbers come out. If we get over the 200 mark, that perhaps adds a bit more fuel that the Fed may actually be inclined to do something in December. In, in December, yeah. Um, if we get you know, a number below the 200, then you're probably almost certain that. Uh, we're going to see the US dollar fall sharply down through that 100 level against the yen, potentially. Absolutely, yeah. So, so they're the two, the two key. Two key announcements next week. I think also during the middle of the week, about Wednesday, there's an ISM non-manufacturing data number, which will be a key number as well. But I think, generally speaking, those are the two high-impacting mm. numbers that are going to affect central banks. Alex, tell us a little bit about... Um, last time you were on the show, you were talking about the research that you do into your trading and, and lining up the week ahead. You mentioned to me a, a couple of weeks ago also that you like to try and essentially, um, for want of another phrase, gang up on a particular currency. Share with us how you do that and how you look at your charts to look to whether or not a currency against a number of currencies is looking strong or weak. Walk us through that process. So basically, again, through my checklist, um, and one of the, one of the um, indicators that I use is what we call the SMACD, and it, it's a great indicator of momentum and also trend. The SMACD? The SMACD. And what does the SMACD stand <laughs> it, it, for? It's a MACD. Okay. Okay. <laughs> The smack that the, the well LTG Gold Rock have modified it to introduce colours, so it makes it very easy to see whether it's green or red, whether it's a buy or a sell. Yep. So it's just visually, it's a lot easier to determine. So what I'm looking at is for my my smack D um, to tell me that a particular base currency. So if I'm looking at the Aussie, yep. I want to make sure that it's a showing a long or a short against every other single pair. So if it is, then I know that that the the Aussie as a base currency is actually trending strong in that direction. So if you're looking to take a long position on the Aussie, you'll make sure that the SMACD is also showing a potential long against the yen, Correct. against the pound, against everything. Correct. So that tells me that, um, as I said, it, it's trending strongly in that direction. You know, if the Aussie was short against some and long against others, then it's not really um, yep. trending and, and with respect to when you enter the trade, are you one of these traders who just simply leaves the profit objective where it is and the stop where it is, or do you actually adjust them in the middle of your trade, or how do you play the probability game? Okay. The profit, as I uh, mentioned last time, I do have a profit strategy for each system, if it's a one-for-one one or, or a two-for-one. That's what I initially um, input into my into my trade. Yep. But then I use the the various the fib expansion tools and resistance levels to modify that profit level, never lower, but higher if, if I can. Yep. Um, but I don't do it throughout the trade. The stop loss I will move if I'm going for a two for one, and I've basically got a one for one in profit already. Then obviously I don't want to turn that into a losing trade. Yep. Then I'll bring my stop loss up to break even. So at least I know. Um, worst case scenario if it goes against me. What's, what's the most common basic trading error that you see in your coaching program that you do with private traders that they make? It's actually moving the stop loss is one of them in that they have a trade that's gone into profit and then it starts to go against them and it's getting close to the profit level and in their mind they've set it's got to go in their direction so they move it a little bit and it gets closer and they move it a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more. So then all of a sudden, instead of risking, let's say, a dollar, they're risking two dollars or three dollars. And, yep. and then you've gone so far... So you've got to keep it simple. Yeah. That's the key. Stick to your rules. Um, take the hits. You're never going to get 100% strike rate. Yep. Um, as you've mentioned before, is minimise your losses, maximise your profits, and, and, yep. and that's the key. All right, so we've got to look out for the RBA statement next week and the US uh, non-farm payrolls. On Friday. Alex, thanks so much. for Always appreciate it. Thank you for having me. That was Alex Coslin, private professional trader. Well, to take advantage of currency moves, you often need to make quick decisions. And making quick decisions when your hard-earned money is on the line can often lead traders to making mistakes. So what I've done is put together a simple-to-use 10-point currency checklist so you can improve your probability of success without making rookie errors. So to get a copy of the checklist, all you need to do is jump online and go to trainwithandrew.com. That's trainwithandrew.com.
and register your name and email address. And first up on Monday, I'll send you the 10-point currency checklist, along with an invitation to join me for four free currency coaching sessions to learn how to use it. So that's trainwithandrew.com, and on Monday, I will send that to you. Well, sadly, that's about all we've got time for tonight, but there's a big game of footy on on the weekend. And uh, before you go... If you want to back a winner between now and next week's show, it's been 62 years before between grand finals for the Doggies, so surely it's about time the Bulldogs have their turn. So back a winner with the Doggies. So thanks for your company. I'll see you again next week, and go the Dogs.